Alright, coming in at number 10 we have the glass jar. As we know, the Americans with the support from the Air Allies dropped the horrifying atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The attacks killed over 200,000 people horribly and the cities were absolutely decimated. Imagine how fragile human flesh is when it comes to heat and then imagine how hot something would need to be to melt glass. Hot, right? Have a look at this glass jar found in the Hiroshima aftermath. It seems that heat of approximately 1,500 degrees centigrade, 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit is required to produce this level of deformity. Scientific examination showed that a virtually instantaneous heat wave struck this object and passed as quickly as it had arrived. Basically, the jar resumed its solidified form without leaving stress marks. The flash heat incinerated many, many people on the spot too, which is absolutely horrible. And this jar just goes to show how hot it really, really was. Always my thoughts going out to the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima many years later. At number 9 we have a haunted clown doll. This sounds like the crossover no one asked for. Clowns and ghosts on their own are bad enough, but now we're packing them together in one complete package. This is like mixing a kick in the nuts with a slap in the face. It's rude and painful. Well if you're trying to ruin your own life then you should look this one up. You can find it on eBay for 200 bucks. So next month why don't you skip on paying your car insurance and then put a down payment on a cursed doll that will probably make you have nightmares about being strangled to death by balloons. You know if you buy something like this and horrible things happen to you, you kind of deserve it. Instead of trying to invite Satan into your home, why don't you take your money and invest it in a nice retirement savings plan. If you make the poor financial choice of investing in this doll, you can hope to be haunted by the two dead children who apparently wake you up by shaking your bed. These ghosts haunt the doll. So not only will your life be full of demonic forces, you'll get those puffy eyes that show the public how distressed you are. Coming in at Number 8 now is the bra and yes I am fully serious I assure you. Now this bra was actually made in the 50s and it's a size 32A and I feel like a lot of guys just don't actually know what that means so I'm about to tell you. Now the number stands for the inches around a girl's bust so the circumference essentially and the letter is the size of the cut part itself. You're welcome. Now according to the seller of this item on ebay Tonya underscore rose the bra is afflicted with the spirit of a sexy woman and still not joking. Wearing it will give the person and a constant stream of gifts and admiration and you can actually reap benefits from it even if you don't wear it. If you place the bra by a lit white candle you can actually see the woman's full body apparition right in front of you and if it's a red candle you can engage more explicitly with that apparition. I don't even know how that would go or who proved that that happens. I feel like some people will see this as a curse and others as a blessing so I mean to you boo. At number 7 we have an African Gula chest. At first glance this thing looks like art your aunt would pick up after she reads a book about African history. Wow Aunt Claire you can really tell how you support African culture by the chest you bought that was made in China. But if you dive into the description of this a little further you can see that this is not what it seems. Apparently a gula chest is a wooden urn with carvings in it that is used to house the soul of a demon. The perfect housewarming gift for a new couple. This one I found on ebay and was the home of a ghoul jinn. A spirit which is supposed to be really bad. They like to mess your life up and cause all sorts sorts of havoc. So if there's someone in your life who you really don't like then you should buy them this urn and have it sent to their home. The person selling this chest is a satanic priest so you know this thing is legit. This isn't any bootleg gula chest, this is the real deal. Upon purchase the priest will send you instructions with the chest detailing everything about the spirit which is attached to it and how to handle it. I'm sure this is just like getting a fish. Watch a few youtube videos and you'll be fine. A big note on this one is there are no returns. Once you buy this thing there is no take backs. Once it is yours, it is yours. Unless you leave it on someone's doorstep. Hmm. Number 6 now is an African voodoo hoof rattle. Now this one actually links in with Che's African gula chest because they're both being sold by the same damn satanic minister on ebay. Now the hoof rattle is a whopping 9 inches long and there's only one like it in the whole world. Now Reverend Dante refuses to go into detail about exactly why it's cursed, he just says he finds it very unsettling. And if a satanic minister finds something unsettling then you know something is very wrong with it because even freaking satan couldn't scare him. Satan was 
was a walk in the park for this guy compared to this voodoo hoof rattle. And I'm assuming because it's a voodoo rattle, it has all like the bad juju associated with said voodoo. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you're in possession of a voodoo item, your haters are just going to be dropping like flies. Just innocently. Well, I don't know what happened. <laughs> just dropped like flies. Either way, miss me with that. At number five, we have the crying boy painting. If you're into collecting cursed items, this one will definitely be one you have in your storage room. Well, until it burns down. This painting has one of the most depressing histories to it. Artist Bruno Amadio saw a boy crying on the side of a step. Bruno was moved by the child, so he decided to find out why he was sad and had such a heavy burden in his heart. No, I'm just kidding. He set up shop and started painting the kid. Then he had the painting printed and started selling it, making great profits off the back of this broken child. Then the people who bought this painting had their homes burned to the ground. Apparently the child who was sad and crying alone with no one there to help him just had his family die in a house fire. The sorrow from this boy's soul now cursed the painting and anyone who buys it has their home burned to the ground. There's even a rumor that after your home burns down the painting is the only thing left standing. So next time someone sees a kid crying on the side of the street, maybe stop and give them a little help instead of trying to capture the moment for a quick buck. Filling out of a four slot is the jewelry box and I know jewelry boxes are always just haunted or cursed but this one is different. Again, the bio of every boy on tinder and plot twist, they are not different. Now, either way this one is an antique jewelry box with a clock inside of it so when you open it the clock sort of just gets lifted up like this and the jewelry part is like a little drawer underneath and I hope you got what I meant from all my miscellaneous gesturing. Now the Utah based owner shared that the clock stops at 3.22 am constantly and by now we know that the 3 to 4 a.m. window is witching our people. Not a good time. Now the lid of the box opens by itself all the time and weirdly enough almost sucks up jewelry. The owner said there have been times where she hasn't put jewelry in the box but overnight it somehow just ended up inside of it. But then on other occasions she's woken up and the jewelry is just all over the floor like the box threw it out like it has a mind of its own. So if that sounds appealing to you it can be yours for a mere $160 US. At number three we have a Victorian birthing chair. Another gem from the world of eBay. If any of you at home are doing exactly what I did and are asking what the hell is a Victorian birthing chair, then let me just tell you it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a big old chair with a hole in it that you can give birth through. Think of it as a toilet if you wanted to poop on your kitchen floor. Back in the day a lady would sit down in this and then shoot a baby right onto the linoleum. Apparently this particular birthing chair is embedded with all the torment of who knows how many ladies giving birth on it. I think that's a top notch way to curse an item. Just have people use it while they're going through the most painful experience of their lives. The owner says some women died in childbirth while on this chair, raising the spooky factor at least 10 points. And if you're wondering how much it's going to cost you to curse your future with the angry spirits of dead women going through labor, it's $300. So right now you can pick up a PlayStation VR headset or a chair stained with placenta fluid. You know this is a really tough choice, is there any chance I could call a friend or an ask an audience member? Where's Regis filming? Coming in at number 2 now is The Ring. Now this one is being sold by a seller located in Bury, London who claims a sterling silver ring has a spirit or curse of a little girl called Evie attached to it. Now The Ring is just a simple one that says sister on it. Now Evie was a young girl who was filled with hatred and jealousy towards her little sister. She despised her simply because she was a nicer person than herself and so she'd always dream up ways to harm her or she'd pretend to play nice with her when really she was just playing a nasty trick. One day they were playing in their garden and one it off to a river nearby. They started playing on the riverbank and Evie overcome with what she thought was the most foolproof plan ever, decided to get rid of her sister for good by pushing her into the river. This is like Mufasa scar level betrayal right here, like what is this? Either way what Evie didn't think of was her sister grabbing onto her for help which is exactly what she did. They both ended up falling into the river and unable to swim they both died upstream. Now their bodies were found a few days later so based on all that the seller claims 
because whoever wears the ring is immediately filled with feelings of jealousy and hatred, so much so that the person can become dangerous to themselves or others. Now, again, I don't know how that would seem appealing to any of you at all, but if you are interested, it's only £28. And finally, in the number one spot, we have Eve, another haunted doll. Do you think demons are attracted to dolls because they're creepy, or are dolls creepy because demons are attracted to them? It's kind of like a chicken or the egg situation. If you're not creeped out by Eve's appearance, then maybe the backstory will be enough to set you over the edge. Eve has the spirit attached to her. It's the soul of a young girl. This girl found her lover sleeping with her sister, killed them both, and then killed herself. Her soul is now forever tormented by being betrayed, and she is now dead, of course. The person selling this doll is very eager to get rid of it because she is kept up at night from the doll crying. Heartbreak takes a long time to get over. She also said the doll causes her physical pain like headaches, but that could be because she's just not getting enough sleep. And if you're one of the brave ones out there who want to buy Eve, you should know that she's selling for $1,666. Whoa, what a spooky price. I like how the seller added that extra one at the beginning. She was like, I want to get rid of this haunted doll, but I'm also not a sucker. Number 10. The Busby Stoop Chair. Yeah, we're kicking this haunted list off with a chair. It's pretty spooky. Let's do it. The Busby Stoop Chair comes from 1702, 10 years after the Salem Witch Trial. So take this one with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? People made odd choices back then. Women were witches and chairs were evil. Welcome to 1702, folks. Englishman Thomas Bubsy had some issues with his father-in-law and he didn't handle them too well. So now he has to be, you know, hanged for it. Yeah, you can't just kill people for no reason, Thomas. What is this, 1692? He was hanged near the Humble Inn. I Ironic, but a chair that was nearby is now said to hold the spirit of one Thomas Busby. If you sit on this chair, you are set to die in a frightful accident. So the chair was declared haunted, but did anything actually happen? Honestly, yeah, kind of. Locals say that during World War II, airmen from a nearby base came to the pub, the inn rather, and those who sat on it never returned. In the 70s, more accidents were connected, but they still kept the chair around until 1978. It stayed in the inn for that long until it was donated to the Thirsk Museum. Honestly, it's not even a rocking chair. It looks like it should be a rocking chair, but it's not a rocking chair. That's the scariest part if you ask me. In our ninth spot today, we have the knockoffs. Sometimes brand name pieces can be expensive and we want the same or similar item, but cheaper. That's where knockoff brands come into play. Take a look at these cereals. They're so similar. Yet yeah, so different. So we got cocoa rice instead of cocoa puffs. We got honey nut crispy oats instead of honey nut Cheerios. Fruit rounds instead of fruit loops. Marshmallows and stars instead of lucky charms. Cookies instead of cookie crisp. And lastly, kids crunch instead of captain crunch. Now if I saw an aisle filled with those, I think I was transported to another universe. In our eighth spot today, we have the map. Now let's get to a serious one. In 1929, a group of historians discovered something pretty strange. It was a map from 1513 written on the skin of a gazelle. It was created by a well-known admiral of the Turkish Navy. Well, what's odd is that the map included Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, several islands, and even Antarctica, which was not discovered until 300 years later. Not only that, but it was said that Antarctica was not covered in ice. The last time that occurred was more than 6,000 years ago. So this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. How did this man map a continent that's been covered by ice for the last 6,000 years? Maybe he's from a parallel universe or maybe the map is. In our seventh spot today, we have the stop sign. Again, another item that just makes me uncomfortable. Someone decided to create a lowercase stop sign and it looks like it's like, stop, no, just stop. Like it's too gentle. As a wise movie once said, no, 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 stick to the stuff you know. It's better by far to keep things as they are. Don't mess with the flow stick to the status quo. If you know what movie that's from, I automatically love you. But maybe this person was driving around in another universe. Who knows? In our sixth spot today, we have the Aumuamua artifact. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, because in another video I didn't, so now I'm changing the pronunciation. Let me know if I get it right, just be gentle, folks. In 2017, this object was found flying by in our solar system. Now, it's quite weird. It looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. This thing is long. In fact, this is now the most elongated known space object. Not only that, but astronomers were shocked by the condition of it. Astronomers thought that the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks like a comet. But this isn't one. 
Now, not only is it not shaped like one, but there's usually a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object just doesn't have that. But before scientists could study it too much, it left our solar system. All we know is that the strange object came from another solar system. Or maybe a different universe. And that's why it's so weird and unlike anything we've ever seen before. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Archless McDonald's. Imagine this, okay? You're hungry, you're driving down a road, madly looking for places to stop and eat, and that's when you see it. Off in the distance, you see two golden arches, and you know exactly what awaits you. The one and only McDonald's. Except whatever universe this is in, McDonald's only has one arch. Like, hello, it's not Nick Donald's, it's Mick. So stop, okay? Or maybe someone messed up with the designing this restaurant, I don't know. Also, since when does McDonald's sell just bags of ice? Like, look at the sign. Bag of ice, one dollar. I mean, it's a steal nonetheless, but still, that's odd on its own as well. In our fourth spot today, we have the Ulfbert Sword. Now, this is something scientists like to call an out of place object. And that's because the sword dates back from around 800 to 1000 AD, which is shocking since they didn't have technology to make such swords back then. Swords like this were made 800 years later during the Industrial Revolution. Not only that, but its carbon content is three times higher than other swords of its time. It also suggested that in order to make this sword, iron ore had to have been heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Again, they didn't have that technology to do that back then. So many people are perplexed. Well, there are a bunch of theories. One is that it was dropped by a time traveler, or two, it might have come from a parallel universe. One that is far more advanced than ours. But let me know your theory in the comments below. In our third spot today, we have Lost and Found. A number of people on Reddit have shared stories in which they have lost something only for it to reappear in a place where it's impossible to. So let me explain. So one man said that he was with his cousin at Home Depot. Before they went in, the cousin grabbed his wallet, but he didn't have any pockets, so he asked the narrator if he could put his wallet inside his pocket so that he didn't have to carry it around. He agreed and he zipped it into his track pants. After shopping around at Home Depot for a bit, they went to check out, but his wallet wasn't in the track pants. So they retraced their steps thinking maybe it fell out, but nothing. So they decided just to go back to the car and return to the store later. When they got to the car, lo and behold, the wallet was on the dashboard. Which is wild, because the cousin literally handed him the wallet and he zipped it into his pants. Now, one person believes that what happened was the universe glitched. And maybe in another reality, the man just left his wallet on the dashboard. Somehow, those universes merged, hence why the wallet was on the dash. Now, it's all confusing how this stuff works, but that's me explaining it the most basic way possible. In our second spot, we have the little dino looking figures. In 1944, thousands of little dino looking figures were dug up in Mexico. Only problem is that the pieces date back to 2500 BCE, a time when no dinosaurs were roaming around and people couldn't have possibly known about dinosaurs then. This is all according to scientists. So were there some other creatures that roamed the earth back then that we don't know of? Or is there a time traveling paleontologist out there? Imagine that, like Ross from Friends also being a time traveler, I love that. I don't know, or the object is from another universe. And in our number one spot today, we have the ring. Now this next individual has a similar story to the Home Depot boys. So for her, she was washing the dishes one day when she heard a clink in her sink. Her ring that she took off when she was doing the dishes had slipped and fell into the sink and down the drain. Now, it was just a cheap one, so she wasn't too concerned. It wasn't like her wedding ring. So she decided to just go on about her day. In the end, she forgot that the ring was even there. That was until a week later when she was putting on her shoes and felt something poking her toe. She emptied out her shoe and her ring clanked to the floor. So somehow, the ring went from being in her sink drain to in her shoe. Someone explain that to me. I don't know, maybe house elves are real. Number 10, the Earth's core. 
I know we all want to get into some creepy spooky stuff, but let's start with a little mini science lesson. The Earth's crust is the second highest layer of the Earth, only being underneath the sea level. Then we have the mantle and the cores, which are incredibly hot and we really can't explore because, well, our machinery would likely just melt. The core is the very center of the Earth and the hottest, around 5,200 degrees Celsius. And here's where it gets weird. Scientists discovered that the core of the Earth is actually asymmetrical. They discovered that seismic waves caused by earthquakes travel faster through the core going north and south than they do going east and west. This causes the iron that solidifies on the sides of the core to grow more on one side and leaving the core lopsided. Scientists actually have no idea why this is happening, though I think it's because there's an ancient colony of dinosaurs living down there, or something. I think I saw a documentary on it once. In our number 9 spot today we have the Iceman. Okay, this one is not an object because it is rather a mummy who was once a real living person, but I still had to include him on this list today because this story is wild. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BCE and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we're currently at person number seven within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warneck, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to find the mummy, died of a heart attack at age 45 just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today we have the Hope Diamond. This gorgeous, unusually large diamond is a blue color and worth an insane 2 250 million dollars. In the off chance you have that kind of money laying around, I still wouldn't recommend purchasing it because it is said to be cursed. The curse dates back to the 17th century and it is said that whoever wears the diamond will have great misfortune and misery. Legend goes that the diamond was stolen from the eye of a sculpted statue of the Hindu goddess Sita and since then it has been cursing whoever owns or possesses the 115 carat diamond. Stories of the horrible fates of those who have since owned the diamond include people taking their own lives, people being killed intentionally by others, and some accounts even claim that the owner was quote torn to pieces, which sounds like one of the worst fates out there. There have since been replicas made of the stone and I think just to be as safe as possible I'll probably stay away from those. Just in case. In our number 7 spot today we have Robert the doll. Annabelle gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from a grandfather to his grandson who was also named Robert, but more often went by Jean. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Jean would often be heard by his parents in his bedrooms having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of Jean screaming, only to find him completely frightened in bed with overturned furniture around him. Jean would then blame Robert for all of the strange happenings and at the time no one really believed him. Jean kept Robert into adulthood and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. Apparently Jean took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Ok, this story is already not great, but it gets worse. Jean lived in a house as an adult that was called the artist's house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing the doll disappear and reappear and they all chose to just stay clear of the house. After Jean passed away in 1974, a woman named Myrtle purchased the house and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear that they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was and some even claimed to see the doll's expression changed if someone spoke poorly of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own and after 20 years she decided she had had enough and donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where he 
he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weird though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb and he would later tell people he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, also known as the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subject to this curse with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that the ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know, but what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm not sure if any hold the power of the real deal. In our number 5 spot today we have Thomas Busby's chair. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. I guess we all gotta have something. In 1702 he found his father-in-law sitting in it and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which like should have never been a threat considering she's a grown woman, but I guess that's what went on in 1702. Anyway, that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually killed him with a hammer and then hid his body in the woods. Of course the body ended up being found and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to the execution he asked to stop by his favourite pub for a beer and this request was fulfilled. Apparently as he finished his drink he said, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972 it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could ever sit in it again which is probably for the best. So now, knowing this story, I want you to let me know in the comments if you had the chance, would you sit in the chair? I wouldn't. <laughs> In our number 4 spot today we have Annabelle the Doll. When I saw the 2014 Annabelle movie I had no idea it was actually based on a real life doll, but since starting my job here at Most Amazing Top 10 I know all about the real story. This doll now resides inside of the Warren's Occult Museum where it absolutely belongs, but this story starts off with a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother who had purchased it from an antique store. Donna and her roommate started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before things began to escalate. Donna began to find notes that said help in her apartment and one night found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building. For some reason the girls didn't immediately get rid of the doll and the story goes that their friend Lou, who was at the girls apartment, heard strange noises one night and went to investigate and he was then attacked and killed by Annabelle. The girls finally contacted a priest who told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell and then put them in contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They tried to do an exorcism on the doll but it apparently failed and now it is kept in a glass box in the museum where it hopefully cannot and will never do any more damage. In our number 3 spot today we have the Uluru Rock. The Uluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to this place. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked not to take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Well, other than the bad karma and just in general feeling
feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do. As it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and even sometimes the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it just seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 2 spot today we have the Bizano vase. The Bizano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night however the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breath she vowed to have her revenge and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on the vase was handed from person to person within her family and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. We don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground. Or maybe in space. Or maybe in the Mariana Trench, just anywhere far away from all of us. In our number one spot today, we have the Goddess of Death. This statue is sometimes also known as the Woman from Lem. This artifact, made out of limestone, was created sometime around 3500 BC and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who have all been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years, death began to come to him and his family. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully still resides. However, the museum curator who handled the item was mysteriously killed a few days after. It is clear whatever curse this statue holds, it is strong and frightening. Starting off this countdown, we have the deck of cards. Now, I don't know about you, but normal deck of cards don't have number one cards. In replace, they have aces. But would you look at that? This odd deck had ones, which makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I've never seen this before. If we're playing Go Fish and you whip out a one, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. Jokes aside, we have decks with aces because they can serve as the highest card or lowest. So it can serve as a one or more than one. That's why we don't have ones, according to Google. Don't quote me. So I don't know where this person got their cards from, but it just seems wrong. Coming into number nine, we have the pilot. This portrait of a World War II pilot in its original 1940s frame was listed on eBay. The listing reads, this haunted picture holds the energy of an old pilot's ghost. When the haunted picture is set out on display, many people have witnessed a man dressed in uniform appear in hallways and doorways of the house. A deep man's voice can be heard at late hours of the night. I can usually hear military jargon being shouted at fast speed. I don't know why this energy is so attached to this haunted picture or what this ghost is trying to tell me. Weird. The listing also claimed that only those with the quote unquote gift would be able to feel the presence. Rightio then. Coming into number 8, we have the World War II wheelchair. This wheelchair is haunted by the ghosts of hundreds of wounded soldiers. Why? Well, the chair was the property of a military hospital during World War II, and it is thought that it contains the spirits of those who sat in it. Shop. Sure. Chair owner Neil Packer said that when he sat in the chair, he felt as if his leg had been amputated. Weird. He said that another man's leg went blue after a brief stint in the chair. Another sitter said that she felt like her chest was heavy as if she'd had an infection. The chair was actually taken onto British television too. It featured on This Morning with hosts Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, and Phil decided to sit in it. Honestly, I feel like if I've learned 
anything across my four years of working on Most Amazing Top 10 is that you should never sit in the haunted chair. Does anyone remember the Busby stoop chair now chained to the ceiling in Yorkshire? Like seriously, don't sit in the haunted chairs. But unfortunately Phil couldn't have listened to me because I made this video after he sat in it and I don't think he watches the channel but maybe he should. Nonetheless he sat in the chair on live TV and this was his reaction. The chair? Yeah. Um, but uh, How do you feel? I feel like <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> don't be annoying. Just joking, this is actually what he said after making that face. Perfectly normal. Really? Yeah, absolutely. No twinges in your leg? I have no I have no twinges, I have no uh, I have absolutely nothing going on here what whatsoever. <laughs> Coming into number seven, we have the pigeon foot. Uh -huh. That's not a pigeon sound. Do pigeons make sounds? I don't know. You'll actually find a lot of severed pigeon feet in war museums across the world. Why? Because birds played a very big part in the war. Pigeons were used to send secret messages, but as you can imagine, that brought about a whole new layer of chaos that came from trying to intercept them and stop enemies finding them. One pigeon that failed in its delivery mission was discovered in 2012 in an English chimney in Surrey. David Martin was cleaning his block's chimney and found that one one dead bird had a red capsule on its leg. He opened it up and discovered a secret World War II era message written in code. Eventually the code was cracked and the message was discovered to say, hit Jerry's right or reserve battery here. Already know electrical engineers headquarters, troops, panzers, batteries, engineers here. Of course Jerry I have to say was the nickname for the Germans for those of you watching that didn't know. So vital intel that was never delivered on account of dead pigeon in chimney. Coming into number 6 we have the trench raiding club. War is savage and that's pretty evident in the existence of this raiding club. Many old weapons were found after the war and often these clubs were found. Now they're usually made from wood wrapped in sharp pieces of metal which to me sounds very medieval. Clubs and flails have been used since times of early warfare. While trench clubs were largely used in world war 1, some were still found after world war 2 and honestly I can't believe in the 20th century we were still whacking each other with spikes on sticks. Although thinking about that I maybe would prefer meeting those than some of the other World War 2 weapons. Although actually maybe the sticks, no the stick, brutal, it's brutal, it's all brutal. It's all got very morbid too, I'm imagining being hit with a big stick. Ah. Coming into number 5 we have the trumpets that started the war. These scary wartime objects were actually from an ancient period in history. In 1922 King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened. Now this was a period between the first and second war. A lot of people were very nervous about the whole thing and perhaps for good reason as this is where the legends of the curse of the pharaoh began. Among the artifacts silver, wooden and bronze trumpets were found. Now the trumpets were played and recorded in 1939 on British British radio, the BBC. A few months after it was broadcasted, World War II broke out and the announcement was delivered to the British public on the same radio station. This has led many to believe that the trumpets are cursed and actually have the power to summon war. This is one of the only instances where I would ever be like, do not play the trumpets. Usually I wholeheartedly encourage trumpet playing, I love trumpets, they're great, but war trumpets are bad. Yes they are. Coming into number 4 we have the lost bombs and the found bombs but mostly the lost bombs are the concern. So a lot of worrying undetonated bombs have been found since World War 2. Just last year 1000 people were evacuated from their homes in Cologne in Germany when a World War 2 bomb was discovered near a petrol station in the city which doesn't sound like a great combination. That wasn't even the worst of it, in 2011 45 thousand people were forced to evacuate their homes when a drought revealed a big unexploded bomb in the Rhine near Koblenz. The scary fact is that thousands of unexploded bombs are still sitting hidden and buried across Europe. Do you want to hear a scary statistic? 70 years later more than 2000 tons of unexploded munitions are uncovered on German soil every year. Terrifying. Sadly coming into number 3 we have the body parts. It wasn't just the Nazis mutating their enemies, a lot of countries were at it. It seems that actually a vast amount of Americans who took part in World War 2 and were stationed in the Pacific would wear Japanese body parts as trophies which is disgusting. Luckily the majority of these have been destroyed but necklaces made of Japanese teeth were fashioned. Ears were pinned to military belts and it is even said that Franklin Roosevelt, the president of the United States, was given the gift of a letter opener made out of a Japanese soldiers arm. A bunch of trophy skulls were found after the war. 
skulls of dead Japanese people were given to Americans as gifts. Here's a picture of a woman that appeared in a magazine in 1944 that shows her writing to her sweetheart to thank him for the skull. Honestly, I can think of more romantic gifts, but like, whatever. Actually, not whatever. Judging you, skulls, gross. Stick to flowers, please. Coming into number two, I do love a ghost ship. We have the Queen Mary. So, the Queen Mary is more than just a haunted object, it's a haunted object filled with hundreds of other haunted objects and floating. When World War II began, British ship the Queen Mary was converted into a transportation ship for Allied troops. She transported 800,000 troops to Europe in her time. Unfortunately, though, she was involved in an accident which killed 239 people. The Queen Mary was retired in 1967 after another stint as an ocean liner. She is now a permanently docked hotel in Long Beach, California, but it is said that she is mercilessly haunted by a number of souls. It seems the swimming pool is haunted by the spirit of a young girl. A first class passenger, dubbed the Woman in White, glides across the floor of the Queen's salon in a long dancing gown. The ship has had to retire the use of room B340 because there have been so many complaints of its haunting. Those who have been on the ship tend to report ghostly goings on, and they have done for decades. Ever since the ship was a working transport ship, people have been spotting ghosts. Scary, but I do love a ghost boat. I don't love this at number one though, this is absolutely horrifying. I only learnt about this today. I am talking about the Blood Flag. The Blood Flag, or the Blutfahne, was a Nazi swastika flag that was regularly carried during the Third Reich and it served as a ceremony piece for the party. The flag was the original carried in Hitler's failed Munich Beer Hall Putsch in November 1923. It was soaked in the blood of an SA member who was killed in the attack. The flag was then saved and had the names of 16 people who died in the putsch sewn in. The flag was kept at Nazi HQ in Munich, but was taken out for ceremonies in which other flags were bought to touch it in order to like consecrate them. It is said that the blood flag touched all of the banners in the Nuremberg rallies. The blood flag, interestingly, hasn't been seen since the end of the war. Nobody knows where it went. Creepy. In our number 10 spot today, we have the Dybbuk box. The box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have been possessed by a Dybbuk, which, in Jewish mythology, is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box, and when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. Number nine. The hands resist him. I listed off some dark paintings not too long ago, but somehow I forgot the hands resisting him. Painter Bill Stoneham created this work of art back in 1972. It's most famously belonged to actor John Marley from The Godfather. He's the guy who wakes up with the horse's head in his bed, in case you have seen that movie. So that actor got this painting at one point, but later it was found on eBay with claims that it was cursed from an anonymous previous seller. And the painting was found abandoned in an alley behind a brewery. So that sounds pretty promising. Almost immediately, the new owner of the painting, the family, their daughter claimed to have seen people in the painting move. Yeah, on top of that, apparently the figures would leave the painting and mess up the house. I mean, as far as excuses go, that's not bad for a messy house. Oh, I cleaned up earlier, but those damn paintings. Oh. Number eight, cursed phone number. The song 8675309 has been stuck in my head for about 18 years now. That song is a banger. Honestly, great jingle too. If a pizza place had thought of that jingle at first, would have been game over if you ask me. A cursed phone number. Is there such a thing? Apparently, yes. 359-888 and then a bunch of eights afterwards. I don't want to say it out loud. You know? So what's the deal here? Well, anybody who's had this phone number in the last 20 years or so has met their fate almost immediately after. CEO of a Bulgarian phone company, Cancer at 48, that's how he passed away. Two criminals later on, both a little more mysterious than Cancer, they both passed away afterwards. All these deaths happened within four years. That's the cursed aspect of it all. The phone number was suspended, so nobody's able to use it now. In case you're thinking about it, don't do it. Maybe it's because of this curse, or maybe it has ties to crime. Either way, 8675309 is still stuck in my head. I'm gonna go down 
out with that song right as soon as we're done here. Number seven, the Bassano vase. This vase comes from the 15th century. It made for an excellent wedding gift in Italy, but the night before the big day, the bride sadly lost her life with the vase still in her hands. The family kept it afterwards, of course, but as the vase was passed down the family line, a pattern began to unveil itself. Whomever held possession of the Bassano vase died shortly afterwards. Now, keep in mind, this was the 15th century, so the average lifespan around then was like, I don't know, 30 years old. But after that many deaths in the family, it was packed away for good, just to be safe, or so they thought. The vase showed up again in 1988 alongside a note. The note was pretty to the point. It said, beware this vase, it brings death. Whoever found it was probably like, okay. They continued on with the vase and later it was auctioned for over $2,000, sans note, of course. You don't want to throw that in there. The pharmacist who won the auction, you guessed it, passed away within months. Number six, Baker's wedding dress. Why is it in so many horror movies that the ghost is always a lady in a white dress? Why are there so many ghosts in nightgowns? What's going on? Why are you all so sleepy? Maybe they're taken out before their wedding night over a vase, or maybe it's this one. Back in 1849 in the small town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, Elias Baker and his wife Hetty lived in the Baker mansion. They had two sons and one daughter named Anna. Anna had fallen in love with one of her father's employees, another steel worker, but after her father wouldn't allow the relationship to take off, <sighs> classic, Anna vowed to never marry anybody. She locked herself away in her room. Now when her father passed away in 1848, she went to go find her true love again, but he had since settled down with somebody else. So she spent the rest of her days behaving erratically and her soul still haunts that same wedding dress today, the wedding dress she never ended up using. Not just the dress, the mansion is haunted as well. Guests would report furniture moving around by itself. Honestly, it's not a bad haunting if you ask me. Moving couches? That would be a great help. I have a terrible back. I would love that. Number five. The Crying Boy Painting. Just the name alone. Okay, I want nothing to do with this one. Yeah, we're back with another haunted painting. What is this, Hogwarts? Why are so many paintings moving around at night? This English curse kicked off in the 50s. Now, this is a reproduction of Bruno Amadio's The Crying Boy Painting, but this painting is apparently responsible for lots of fires. In September 1985, a family's home burnt down, everything was gone, but the painting looked untouched. British tabloid The Sun even published a story on it, which I'm sure helped the situation. It read, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy Picture. Now, we laugh at beliefs from the Middle Ages and all that, but we're not really much further here, are we? People smoking in every house in the 50s were like, yeah, maybe it was a painting. It was probably that. Number four, the Hope Diamond. Coming from the 1660s, this curse began when a gem dealer named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier bought this large diamond when visiting India. He bought it, apparently, okay. The origins of the diamond were unknown, but it didn't matter. This beauty was just sitting there and he had to. Well, later on, after Tavernier got the uh, diamond, rumors spread throughout Europe and the United States that Tavernier actually stole the diamond from the statue of a Hindu goddess. The newspapers actually kicked this one off by publishing the Hope Diamond as an ancient curse. The diamond at one point ended up in the hands of King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette. Now if you don't know about them in history, they were, they lost their lives during the French Revolution. We'll say that. The old guillotine dream team. The stone then went to Lord Francis Hope come 1839 and by that point it was deemed cursed officially. This is when it got the name, the Hope Diamond, right? They ended up selling the diamond shortly after being reduced to poverty. Then Evelyn Walsh McLean bought the stone in 1912. Shortly after, her son was killed in a car accident. So just bad news all around. When the stone was delivered to its final and current home, the Smithsonian, back in 1958, the driver delivering the package was later hit by a truck. He survived, but shortly after, his house caught fire. Moral of the story, you don't need diamonds for more reasons than one. Number three, the Anguished Man. Historical paintings are cool, but this is the first time I've read up on the Anguished Man myself. Gotta admit, it's pretty unsettling. Wow. It's considered one of the most haunted objects in the world, and it looks like it too. Definitely would, I would guess, I'd pick it out of the crowd. This oil painting was created by an unknown artist, but the actual paint is mixed with their blood. So their legit DNA is in this painting. Blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Not much is known of the artist as he passed away shortly after, but the current owner is Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. His grandmother had given him the painting. There wasn't much known beforehand, but his grandmother warned him that it was cursed. Hey, here's some Werther's Originals and a cursed painting. Classic grandmas, you know how they do. Sean had to leave it in his basement at first because his wife wasn't a fan. More than fair, but when the basement flooded, which is also mysterious and that sucks, he had to then move it upstairs. After that point, the couple heard crying, screams, whispering all throughout the house, things you don't want to hear alone in a house with a haunted painting. It got so bad, Robinson uploaded time-lapse footage to YouTube in 2011, and it shows the door closing by itself next to the painting. 
check it out. Also, yeah, keep this in the basement for sure. I agree with the missus on this one. Number two, broken mirrors. It doesn't matter who you are, you've heard of this one at some point. You break a mirror and what do you get? Bad luck, you get seven years of bad luck. Has this happened to you? If so, what year are you on? Are you close? How close are you to the seven year mark? We got your back, you got this, you're so close. Ancient Romans kicked this one off. They believed that the human soul would renew every seven years. That's where the whole seven year thing comes into play. It takes time to repair the human soul, apparently. That combined with the belief that a mirror's reflection was a way into the soul, well, now we have one guy who feels really bad for breaking a mirror, essentially. Therefore, a curse. If you break a mirror, you're tearing the soul from the body and abandoning it. In Kazakhstan, if you break a mirror, evil spirits would haunt the person responsible for the damage. That's a pretty scary deal. You gotta keep those hands grippy. They say you can't look into broken mirror pieces afterwards or else that's bad luck in itself. There's too many mirrors now, honestly, cut to today. I'm sure ancient Romans had no idea what 2022 would look like. We have phone cases with mirrors in them now. That's a lot of bad luck in jean pockets, my friends. And coming in number one, curse of the billy goat. Can a team be cursed? Is that such a thing? Here we go. I mean, I live in Toronto, home of the Maple Leafs, and we don't, we don't see a lot of wins on that side, but the Chicago Cubs curse, well, that was a huge deal for a very long time. The Chicago Cubs curse comes from 1945, when a man named Bill Sionis, nicknamed Billy Goat, he was kicked out of a Chicago Cubs game. Yeah, he actually didn't even get into game four to begin with. Was he too intoxicated? No. Did he bring a live goat with him to this game? Yes, that was why. Yeah, Bill brought with him his pet goat for good luck. So after the staff said, no, you can't enter the 1945 World Series with a live goat, he then cursed the club over and over on the way out. What a guy. Saying the Cubs ain't gonna win no more over and over again. And that was the game that they dropped the ball. So something kind of happened. The Detroit Tigers won and the curse of the Billy Goat kicked off. Off, and it got so out of hand that come 1994, the Cubs had lost 12 games in a row, their worst home start in history. So Sam Sayanis went to Wrigley Field, everybody was chanting to let the goat in, and then the Cubs won 5-2. I don't know. Humans in the 1700s were like, oh, that woman's cursed, she's a witch for sure. And then humans today are like, ah, oh, that stadium's cursed, for sure cursed. We haven't changed, moral of the story, I don't know. Starting us off at number 10 is the China set. Sort of anticlimactic, I know, but I feel like the backstory of this one more than makes up for it. Three pieces of the set were found in a wad of old newspapers under the porch of a house made sometime in the early 1900s. It had clearly been there for a long ass time since it was covered by a bunch of decayed dirt and so the homeowner kind of just put it on their windowsill and forgot about it. A few weeks later, one of his old neighbors walked by and noticed the china and asked him where he got them, saying they looked really similar to a certain other neighbor I used to own. Now the other neighbor was a Mrs. Dylan. He used to get beaten by her husband, and then one day out of nowhere, her husband just wound up dead. Mrs. Dylan then became very reclusive and quickly moved away without telling anyone, not even her friends. The homeowner appreciated the story, but Loki didn't really care until the next morning. Morning. They found the set inside their house when they damn well never brought it inside. Both cups even had tea in them, like can you imagine? They quickly put the set in a shoebox and left it outside and it was picked up by somebody else. That someone admitted that the first time they ever cleaned and wiped it down there were three or four dips in the lights above them. And every time they've cleaned it after that the same thing always happens, the lights keep dimming. It ended up being sold to this person for $45 but I honestly think Mrs. Dylan killed her husband then left the set behind and now the spirit of her disgusting husband just cursed the set. But plot twist, in his afterlife he realized what a horrible person he was so to make up for that he just fills cups with tea. I don't know if that makes up for being an abusive husband but okay. Number 9, The Devil's Claw. In the 1980s a group of explorers took to New Zealand to look underneath the mountain. What they found was probably something that they never would have expected. Eventually they came upon pieces of bones attached to flesh, attached to what looked like a dinosaur's claw. It had three long fingers, each with their own long pointed claw forming an entire hand. But like most dinosaur bones, this one didn't look like it had been dead for centuries, instead looking like it had only died very recently. The whole team was now stuck in this deep dark cave under a mountain, surrounded by remains of what appeared to be some sort of modern dinosaur or monster. Some people that have seen the hand say that it reminds them of the devil, and looks like it is his hand that somehow appeared in the ground of New Zealand. Others believing it to come from an ancient bird that used to roam there. Number 8, The Betts Mystery Sphere. The so called Betts Mystery Sphere was found in the 70s and is exactly as its name suggests, a sphere, being completely smooth except for a triangular symbol. When they found it, they thought it was space junk and they picked it up and took it home. But then they noticed it had some strange properties, like seeming to hum and resonate with certain noises like guitar playing. They also realized that when rolled, it would change directions on its own and often 
and return back to where it had started. When this was discovered, the Betts family were swarmed by media wanting to get a look at the mystery sphere. Many people witnessing the sphere's strange activities and the way it would completely change directions in no time at all with no outside influence. To this day, it's not known what the Betts mystery sphere actually was. It's still a mystery, some people citing it as some sort of alien orb. Unfortunately, we probably never will get a true answer as the current whereabouts of the sphere are unknown. Number 7. Prosthetics Archaeologists are no strangers to digging up weird bodies and burial sites, but this one seemed especially strange. In the north of Italy, they found a body, among others, that seemed to come from the 6th to 8th century. Obviously, this alone isn't weird, they find bodies all the time. What was weird is that the man had an amputated hand, and he had a knife as his prosthetic. Within the grave, they also found the skeleton of a headless horse and several greyhound dogs. Upon examining the man, they found that his body was an incredible story of survival for a person who had received an amputation before proper medical practices and antibiotics existed. They knew that the knife was a prosthetic and not just something he'd been buried with because the arm and knife both showed the signs of having been attached for a long time. Personally, I think this guy was probably the inspiration for Merle Dixon on The Walking Dead. Number 6. The Black Sarcophagus Around 4 years ago, a meme went around the internet about drinking the sarcophagus juice. So where did that come from? The juice came from the black sarcophagus. In summer of 2018, they found a massive black granite sarcophagus buried deep in Egypt, untouched for around 2,000 years. Many people believed that the sarcophagus would contain some deadly curse and that we should not open it. But they did open it and they found, well, juice. It contained three skeletons and a red-brown sewage-like liquid, apparently giving off a completely unbearable stench. It was so bad that when they first opened it only two inches, everyone vacated the premises. So did the tomb have a curse in it? Well, one of the archaeologists said the following, We've opened it and thank god the world has not fallen into darkness. Well, I think he may have said that a bit prematurely. With the state of the world, today, we may want to go back and consider that maybe it was the sarcophagus juice that cursed us. Number 5. Williams Enigmalith In the late 1990s, an electrical engineer called John J. Williams was on a hike when he saw a strange rock sticking out of the ground. How it would have looked different from any other rock on a hike, I'm not sure, but he proceeded to dig it up, and he found that it was in fact very strange. That's because it appeared to have a metal piece attached to it, resembling the male end of an electrical plug. It became known as the Williams Enigmalith, Enigmalith being a combination of the words enigma and monolith. He consulted both an engineer and a geologist to take a look at the rock, and they revealed that the electrical component within the granite showed no sign of ever having been glued or welded. The rock itself looking to be around 100,000 years old. Williams has apparently encouraged scientists to examine the rock, but none have ever stepped up to do so. Maybe because they don't want us to know the truth about it. Number 4. Alien Skulls If you've seen Indiana Jones, then you're probably familiar with the concept of the crystal skulls. Skulls with elongated heads that are going to be used to somehow conquer the world or something. Well, it turns out that these skulls aren't just a work of fiction, and if you sat around watching History Channel with your dad as a kid, then you may have seen the special they did about the search for the real crystal skulls. Well, in a Mexican graveyard, researchers found a total of 25 skulls, 13 of them having these long headed malformations. When you look at pictures of them, they definitely look like they must be something alien, coming from another planet. Researchers, however, believe that this comes from a cultural practice of stretching the skull, as it was maybe a sign of higher social status. Personally, I'm going to keep believing it was aliens. So far, no real confirmed Confirmed crystal skulls have actually been found, but maybe someday they will. Number 3. Antikythera Mechanism In the early 1900s, this 2000 year old artifact was found off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera. It is shaped like a circular gear with other mechanisms seeming to attach to it. Scientists have been trying for decades to try and figure out what this is and what it could have possibly been used for around 2000 years ago, some describing it to be the 
first ever computer. While it may not look like a work of art to you, a professor at Cardiff University said it was extraordinary, describing how everything was perfect and seemed to be done very carefully, even going so far as to compare it to the Mona Lisa. Upon close study, it seems to track the solar system, like the time of day, as well as even eclipses. It's the most complex piece of machinery from its era, and nothing similar came around for a very long time. Some people bringing into question the idea that humans had some sort of outside influence to help build this computer. Number two, the Voynich Manuscript. If you're a fan of rare books, then this one is for you. The Voynich Manuscript was rediscovered in the early 1900s, though it had previously circulated through the hands of emperors and rulers. To this day, we don't actually know what the book says, as it is written in an indecipherable language and its illustrations are just as confusing. The pictures include things like otherworldly plants, non-existent constellations, and naked women swimming through strange tubes and green baths. Almost every page includes these fantastical drawings and strange texts about things that seem like they must come from another world. The book was written back in the 15th to 16th century, and perhaps the person who wrote it had a window to another planet, or perhaps a parallel universe. Copies of the manuscript are now available to purchase along with historical and scientific perspectives on the book if you're interested in taking a look for yourself. Number 1. Vampire Skeletons Vampire imagery and stories have been around for centuries, even spanning all the way back to the Bible if you saw my other video on that. But as it stands, we don't really have any true evidence or proof of the existence of vampires, unless you think the Twilight series was a documentary. In Poland, one team excavated a group of bodies that seemed to date back to the 14th century. Again, not super weird, their job is basically finding bodies. But what was different about these ones is that they appear to have been taken apart after their death, not by grave robbers or sight disturbers, but immediately after they had died and were being buried. They had their heads removed and had been punctured through the spine, their heads being held under large stones. Researchers believe that this is due to the fear of vampires, and the people burying them believed them to be blood sucking monsters and buried them this way to prevent them from ever rising up again. Well, I guess it worked. 